All the board members ready? Is the audience ready? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we will reconvene our April 11th Board of Supervisors meeting. We're hereby reconvened. We have the agenda before us. Uh, there were a couple of things we wanted to add. Mr. Seeley wanted to add something and then decided we'll wait for our next board meeting for that. And I believe we're going to have Mr. Cully present some information we have recently uncovered that will have a great deal of effect on the budget. So we will begin with Mr. Cully. And do you have on the screen? And your screen, their screens are working, correct? <clears throat> uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, we developed this memo yesterday after the adoption of the tax rates. Um, staff worked with the Commissioner of Revenue after they produced the uh, personal property book. You know, they produce a personal property book and a, a land book that's then transferred to the Treasurer's Office to create the bills and send the tax bills out. <clears throat> and so um, once the final download from DMV was completed and that book was finished, uh, Tamika worked with them, and it's approximately 6% growth in the number of vehicles, boats, and other personal property, more than what we had anticipated. Um, so that leaves the uh, increase in personal property revenue about 621922 over what was in the proposed budget. There's also an increase in machinery and tools revenue of $231,485 and an increase to the motor vehicle carrier tax revenue of $53, uh, $450. And that's based on the actual tax book. So that doesn't mean that'll all, all come in, but that'll be what would be billed. And so that's a total increase in revenues of $906,857 over what we anticipated based on the, the numbers from January. And looking at things um, in preparing for our third quarter budget report, um, staff uh, analyzed preliminary data that we have up through March 31st. Um, and so we made a couple other recommended changes. We would like to increase the business professional occupancy BPOL revenue to, of an increase of $256,536 based on where BPOL is trending over this current year's budget. And we want to decrease ambulance EMS recovery revenue. Um, it's not because we're running less calls. It's because we've got some issues in billing uh, and working with the billing company that bills that out. So we, we don't anticipate we'll receive about 109519 So we want to lower that line item by that amount. <laughs> so that's a total increase of those two things of $147,017. So the net increase to the general fund revenue is $1,053,874. Um, any questions? I've got some after we we'll, oh, You got a question now? This one, anyway. Mr. Cully, the loss of revenue um, regarding the recovery services, what, those normally would have been billed to persons. Insurance. But we feel we're, insurance. insurance. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to get the money from the insurance companies because of a billing error on our part? Not a or, billing error. I think I've got to have the expert, if you don't mind, answer that question. So in the past, uh, our collection rate was probably in the 86 to 87% rate. Right now, we're down a little bit, about 6% below that. Okay. Uh, if you recall, in the, in the board document a few months ago, we talked about raising our billing rates to compensate for some of that. And so we will see that come new effect uh, July 1. And that's, again, only on insurance. So uh, getting the money out of the insurance company is becoming harder and harder. With COVID, there were some delays in people's payments. They didn't have to make those. Uh, President Biden signed it, a bill of a no surprise billing. So um, people are getting EMS bills, and right now they can waive those uh, and not pay those. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I just know the big picture. We're expecting less money. <laughs> Anyway, that's the increase. We do have some recommend, recommended uses of the revenue uh, increase we'd like to go through next. 
in the uh, proposed budget, we were going to transfer $879,855 from the Carolina Detention Center Fund um, to the general fund. I would recommend we transfer that to the Capital Improvement Fund. It's one-time money that we've saved up over a number of years in CDF funds. Um, and we would also need an additional $59,073 from the general fund for a total of $938,928. To transfer that to the Capital Improvement Fund, and we would use that to pay cash rather than lease purchase the uh, items in the capital improvement fund. So it's no new spending proposed for the capital new improvement fund, but uh, to do away with the lease purchase. As you remember, Courtney was here last year and said we were real close to our borrowing threshold. So if, uh, I think that will do us a lot of good if we don't um, take on any debt this year uh, as that relates to our bond rating <clears throat> and our uh, knocking on our door of being debt per capita and, and debt per assessed value. Um, this would re reduce the projected total transfer from the undesignated fund balance to meet the expenditures in 24 by $114,946 from my proposed of $2,551,068 down to $2,436,122. Um, in the utility fund, um, due to an increase in interest rates, we reevaluated the interest revenue that was occurring versus the uh, cost for the $20 million in utility bar. And normally we don't have any interest income in the utility fund because we don't normally have a whole lot of cash there. And uh, interest rates have been so low over the years, we really haven't, that's not a, a line item of real revenue. And like it is in the general fund, we always have some interest uh, in the general fund as far as revenue. Um, so we, we looked at that and we feel we can reduce the, utility fund for debt service by 494000 from $2,291,165 down to $1,797,165. Um, um, so likewise, that will lower the um, transfer from the general fund because you know we were proposing to transfer significant dollars in the utility fund this year from the general fund by that same 494. So it's not new revenue to the general fund. It's just a less expense from the general fund. So if you do that, then you um, would reduce um, the undesignated uh, general fund balance transfer, um, which we just lowered up there to 2,436,122 down to 1,942,122. So it would save you uh, that much more in the general fund transfer. So it's not new revenue um, in the general fund, just a savings on expense from that transfer. I mean, any questions about that? Sorry about the voice. Pollen's been killing me for two days. <clears throat> so this is sort of a summary of uh, kind of sums it up. So the original county administrator uh, budget general fund was sixty four million five hundred twenty five thousand five ninety three. Um, less that transfer to the utility fund of 494000 plus the $59,073 additional transfer to capital improvements to put with it, um, CDF transfer to capital improvements. The new expense budget general fund would be $64,090,666. The account administrator's uh, original on the uh, CIP <clears throat> um, was $1,125,000. $694. We saved approximately $35,000 when the board authorized us to buy uh, Brush 5 on the uh, contract from REC. So we, and that happened after we proposed the budget. So now that new expense budget is $1,096,94. Yeah. <clears throat> monitors went out. I killed them. The monitors keep going out. I mean, they're on now. Go ahead. And you know, as we propose to pay for that, basically with 59000 from the uh, general fund transferred, and then the, uh, the rest of it would come from the detention center that would go uh, detention center fund into CIP, make cash purchases. So I, that's pretty much the close of, of this report. I'm glad to answer any questions or discuss anything further, any other thing you have. I had a question, Mr. Colley. Did you have a question, Mr. Parham? Yeah, we're plugging something in. I'm hot. I can be hot. 
That's probably not plugged in somewhere between here and there. Mr. Blackshear's don't work either. I work, so it's somewhere right it's here. A, yeah, it's right there. Where did David go? Well, maybe that's the monitors too, because our monitors are. I was again. in the middle between the last two over there. It's not plugged in. It's a network cable. If you plug the network cables in the port wrong, some of it doesn't work right either. One's got to go yeah, one and two into two. Learned that one time. Remember that? There we go. Sorry, didn't know that one. Yep. Mr. Forehand, you had a question. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> David, come back. Didn't, didn't stay. All right, now that works. Uh, Mr. Kelly, um, with the higher interest rates, are we expecting our revenue from interest on our general fund undesignated balance to? We do. That's already in. That's we, already in. We okay. we normally have interest there, so it was easy to see that line item and You're adjust just, that up based on, on what we had already gotten, what we what we were seeing. Okay. Um, it was, we started seeing an increase in, in uh, that in November um, significantly. Um, but not having really any in the utility fund, it didn't really dawn on us as we went through the utility right. revenues. Oh, we need to increase interest because we don't normally. It was borrowed money, so you don't really think about it. Right, but it's but it's money that's there in that account. It's there, and we're making more than we're paying on it, which is unusual. <laughs> but right, the beauty of inflation, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just have one question. At the uh, at the last board meeting, you had uh, Tamika had given us a. Um, Smith had given us a report on the surplus as of the second quarter. I think there was something that was said it was about a six million surplus as of this. That's we were re that was revenues ahead of expenditures. Revenues, all right. And so it's is not there, technically a surplus at that. Okay, revenues ahead of expenditures. Is that is that on pace for normal? Is that a normal per like if you go back halfway through the year? Is that something that's normally that, that we're sounds, six million? No, that sounds high. We normally are underspending at the at the six months, so that is normal. Um, revenues are normally somewhat under 50% collected, and we're usually somewhere in the 40% expended expended on the general fund normally. So, what would you say normally that would that number would be for four million? Man, probably somewhere in that. We're I think we're running ahead. I mean, I just you know, but I till we get to December. I mean, June 30th. That's a not, not you know not really a that's just a paper number, not a real one. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sealy? No, um, Mr. Underwood, you have some more? No, sir. Ms. Long? I had a couple, Mr. Quest, uh, Mr. Culley. One is the budget for 24 is based on tax revenue collections in December 23 and June 24, correct? Correct. So this additional revenue that we see based on the increase in vehicles could be not there in june of 24 23 i'm talking about i know but i'm saying it, well it, before you get ahead of me oh. it's, it's 23 if there are increases in the number of vehicles right now today we should probably see some increase in revenue received in june 23 correct so this would not possibly reflect uh, reflect that number right correct we're when we, we it's it's a interesting concept to grasp taxes are yearly right real estate and personal property the budget splits that by starting july 1. that's why i started with december right. Right. and then june right. of 24. So you you're budgeting looking ahead to what you're going to collect not in for 24 i'm not worried about what we collect in june that's already in this year's budget. So there'll probably be a bump there that'll be left over in fund balance. That's, that's the point. So we will, in. due to this growth that, that we're projecting for next year's budget, we know that this growth will affect this year's budget because Somewhat. in June, yeah. there is a tax collection. Correct. And that's one of the reasons that you don't, I don't feel bad with the, you know, the 1.9 to 2.5 million balancing number being, from being the fund balance because i i assume with the growth that we've been seeing over the last few years that won't be necessary it's just a balance and a balance in number of the way the revenues aren't where our expenditures are the other the other point is it's it's nine hundred thousand 
and we probably have a collection rate of 90 percent or somewhere in that case it's fairly yeah better i think it's better than that but that's a beth question but yeah i th think it's better okay. than that. i don't see beth but she's not yeah, she's then i can't probably, be that far so yeah she's probably huh, she probably on she's probably on youtube but, um, um but but if it's 90 percent, we would we would get eight hundred and ten thousand. man we still get right much of it yes. so we'd still get a, a big majority all right, that's that's one of the main reasons that I wanted us to start doing these quarterly reports again because it gives us a better idea of where we are and what things are changing. I agree, one hundred percent. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Seaman. Um, the increase in personal property tax revenue is still due to inflated used car prices. Correct. I see, Mr. Massoon. It's an it's a, not about much, a six not percent much. growth. They did. A, I asked them to do a. Uh, comparison on people that had the same vehicle. So if you had a truck, you had the same truck, it's down from what your tax bill was last year. Not necessarily a lot, but you have the same car. Car year over year has gone down. But do we growth, expect it to go down again? We do. I expect personal property so to continue to go down. So if it goes down again, this but number could actually it could be... go down. I mean, I understand we have more vehicles. I'm right. just looking at, we looked at huge inflated prices. Correct. They're going to, there is, uh, the market's correct, and I think everything you see, you know, the market's correct, and you, if you watch any, you know, local TV, mm -hmm. there are a lot of car dealers running specials with, right. you know, 0.9 finance and 0% financing for 60 months. There's a lot of that stuff going on. wasn't going on in the fall. Right. So it's it's definitely the car market's turn. The inflation's causing people not to have the, and plus, if you go to borrow money to buy a car now with interest rates as high as they are, it really adds hundreds of dollars to your your car payment. So people are just not able to pay the inflated prices that it was in, in the used market, especially. I just don't want to bank on this this increased number of values are going to go down again. And we're going to see some. Well, yeah. Not that it's going to go away, but it's going to go down. It's not going to stay where it's at, even though we've got increased vehicles that will all be a year older next year. And if the prices come down, then we're going to be sort of, where are we? That's that's all I was right. looking and, for. And that's where I started when when I was when I said yes. Next June, the last payment in this budget we're right. talking about may be a, a different when we run the book next year. If we if if say it crashes for some reason, we we could really be hurt by that. But but we set the tax rate have before to, we, we have do to that. look which are correct. And so if we so, came back and said, oh, we're down. $2 million right. in personal property because the values have gone down. Remember, we did lower the We could equalize the rate. The rate. Yeah, we lowered the rate 35 cents. But, uh, well, you know, well, that's a good follow-up question because that's 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 kind of what I do, and I'm, I'm a nerd, so I'm not going to apologize. But we're not going to do another download for December. No. no this they, is the only download we do this year. They do monthly downloads for proration. But the right, book for is is, right. And but so, the book is as it is right now. Right. That, that. So, so really, what what the Commissioner of Revenue's office is saying is, when they got all of the vehicles from from DMV, most of the existing cars probably their value went down a little bit, mm -hmm. but there was such growth in new cars or people with old cars buying newer cars that now we see this additional revenue. Correct. And again, back to my original point, this additional revenue, we will see some bump in June of 23. Correct, because it's billed out right because now. Because it's billed out for now. Correct. Are these yearly numbers or these are numbers for the quarter? Yearly. The, the well, 900,000. That's a year. That is a year. We're looking at, when the budget time, we're looking at, at per year. All okay. these figures that I gave you were budget related and are yearly, <clears throat> yearly for the budget. So theoretically, I can say if it's nine hundred thousand and we get ninety percent, that's eight eight hundred thousand. If it's half a year, it's four hundred thousand. Correct. Is the bump we would probably be able to project? Correct. And we may end up with that. That could be a bump that goes away in next June. So that, you know. Well, no. See, we set the tax well, rate do, before June, yeah, so I'm, it's not going to go rate. away. If you don't change the rate. Yeah. All right. That's a that's a big point. We're all clear there. All right, Clay. Mr. Forehand, one quick question. Um, the business personal property, is this all wrapped up in the same number, or is that a separate line out? No, it's all, I think okay. personal property, and I'm going to is that in, all in this number? They're the experts. I remember I just look at the numbers. Yeah. It's what helps to have them here. So thank you. Thank you all for being here. 
It really depends on the question. The biz business personal property, we didn't cover in what was asked of us because that can change up or down depending on whether the business either removes equipment or sell sells the equipment or gains new equipment. Does so, come from DMV? No, it does not come from DMV, no. But okay. But that 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 value is in we're just looking at a personal property that's included in the number that we have. Yes. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes. And we've done we've had some growth in business personal property from our economic development efforts. We built some so. that into the revenue before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Typically across the board, outside of the kind of the last two years of anomalous stuff, we typically have a three to five percent increase in pretty much all the categories okay. for the most part. Okay. Yeah, just vehicles in particular, motor vehicles, cars, trucks have been I think between 21 and 22, we had an increase motor vehicles of, of roughly 250, and this year it's closer to 900. Wow! So it's 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 a steep increase in total. Number All those people that moved into the area finally register their vehicles locally. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a combination of that, and then with values um, values going down, people people are probably purchasing more. We've been definitely yeah. been seeing more purchase this year comparatively. Yeah, we don't have the emissions tests and all the other stuff. That's right. So where a lot of those came from. All right. Before you leave, um, just a curiosity. We set the tax rate this year, and then you ran the DMV book or whatever it is, right? Well, we typically, so we get the annual download January 15th. So we've mm -hmm. already worked that by the time that you guys okay. set the rate. And we also work week, weekly downloads from there on out all year long. Okay. Yeah. What I wanted to make sure is what, what Mr. Cully was referencing in June 24, that the possibility of the rate or the values being much lower yeah. and you'll know ahead of time like we did last year when we knew ahead of time that the values were really high so we tried to equalize it then Correct. yeah we'll we'll know well ahead of time what what nato values are going to be looking like and mr chairman the, the the issue for me is when the values are inflated the citizen takes a hit when the value decreases, if we're not careful and we adjust the rate properly, if we try to equalize it, they still take a hit. So I want to make sure that we're fair to the taxpayer, that we're looking at a rate that is fair to them so they're not getting hit whether the value is high or the value decreases, that we're not trying to recruit the same dollar amount even though there's depreciation in the value of the vehicle, and yet we increase yeah. the, the rate. Yeah. To, that was the composite. I don't want that to happen. And, and I use the analogy of equalizing, which is the real estate numbers we have, which may not apply to personal property tax, but it was the same concept so right. we could all understand. Right. It's, it's not that we have to make Mark pay $5,000 for his brand new car and then we lower the rate, and he still pays $5,000. It's trying to make it fair, but you stepped up to say something, well, Mr. Bassoon. To segue into that, too, when we're talking about the collections in June, um, I wanted to remind the board, everyone, that with proration, when cars are coming in throughout the year, although we do weekly downloads, the law says we have to use what that value was as of January 1, unless it's a 2023 vehicle, which NADA doesn't have all that, then we use the cost of the purchase price that they put into DMV. So the values for everything coming into the county throughout the year will be based on the value as of January 1's figures um, because we are proration. So the revenue stream for vehicles coming in throughout the year um, will remain with that January 1 value, and that is key for the December bill. So there will still be an uptick possible uptick in dollar amounts. That's kind of interesting, Mr. Bassoon. If I if I have a car January 1st, 1985, whatever, and now I sell it in December, I don't get that year's depreciation because it's prorated. I get charged whatever it costs January 1st. Yeah, that's a state law. Our hands are tied behind our backs on that one. That's statewide law. Okay. That's, yeah. I'm not surprised, but um, 
I don't think that's fair. I, yeah, I, I don't think most people would disagree with you, unfortunately. Yeah, that is what the state law says. That is tax day, January 1, and that's what the assessments are, have to be based on. Okay. All righty. Um, while these gentlemen are here, any questions of them? Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, Mr. Cowley. Yes, what is the revenue value for one penny in tax rate? 334. 334. I was going to say 326, but I couldn't remember. 334. I knew it was 333 three, three something. 334 is good to remember now. So you just discovered $1.5 million in three cents. Revenue sources, 1.5 million, right? So we we fit, but not in the general fund. But yes, 1.5 1. in new revenue. 1.5 in new revenue in the general fund. In the general fund, the oh. the, the million or the 900 thousand for personal property, the hundred thousand. Uh, somewhere B else, B poll was B -Pole. up two hundred, but we're going down with another one. So the net was at one. And then the interest funds we found, so that's one point five total. Correct. Which, but that crosses funds, so right. Three thirty three goes into that. What four and a half times, almost five, four and a no, half. Three, three times three. Three, three times is five is nine. fifteen. Oh, you wanted the one point five. Oh, I was one point five. One, I was going into the one million. Yeah. No, you wanted four and a half. Five. Yeah. Mr. Smith, you can check my math. I think it's four and a half. It's just a guess. So we we discovered the equivalent of a four and a half cent tax increase for just this year, right? Yes, we. Uh, and, right. 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 Yeah, Mr. Thomas. Except that we are, according to Mr. Cully, one one million nine hundred and forty two thousand one hundred and twenty two dollars into the fund balance Correct. with the current budget. Correct. I mean, we can't lose sight of That's right. We are into the fund balance to mm -hmm. balance the budget that we've got. So even though we found revenue, <clears throat> no, we no, have you're an missing offset. The, you're, you're missing the point. If we had, okay. we had raised taxes five cents, we basically found that five cents right now. If we don't do anything else with the money, that's Correct. what I'm saying. Now right. you've made recommendations, which I guess the board can we'll discuss. To, that's up. That's completely up to you. Because no. those are your recommendations, Correct. the board can can do what you uh, recommend, or we can do something else, or we can not decide to do it now. But but my point was just the pure numbers of what a five cent tax increase would have been just for this year, and we've managed to discover that money based on additional analysis and the fact that. Our uh, commissioner's office found six percent growth. Correct. Okay, and we'll we'll we will see a bump in some of that in June. Correct. Okay. Now, Mr. Seeley, your point of the fund balance is another story. If you'd like to elaborate on that some more. Well, I understand that we found we found. I, I like revenue. discovered. Discovered. Yeah. Okay, we discovered. Um, but I think we can't lose sight of the fact that the budget is built on a $2,551,068 is what we were going into the fund balance to balance the budget we've got. Mm -hmm. So with the newly discovered revenue, and if we allocate that the way it's being suggested, we're still $1,942,122 into the unencumbered balance to balance this this next year's budget, which, as Mr. Cully said, he's banking on growth. But if we don't get that, we then have the bond council to deal with because, you know, we still are obligated to be 12 to 17 percent of the unencumbered balance as a percentage of the budget, the total budget, not just right. our side. Yeah, total budget. And the other right. thing the is the county budget count, which counts schools. Counts, right. The other thing they um, don't like to see is where you're actually taking from the fund balance. If you're budgeting it and not taking from it, you can, but you start actually going into the fund balance year over year, then that's going to be a hit on your bond rating, according Mr. to Courtney. Mr. Kelly. Mr. Black. Just uh, so when we, after at the end of last year, 
for last year's budget. What did we, did we go into the fund balance? No, much? we were 5 million and change ahead. So and most of that you, was personal property growth from the year before, before you lowered the rate. Was there a prediction there to that we were going to go into the fund balance? Yes. There was, so, was a, so last year there was a prediction that we would go into the fund balance and then we end up having a $5 million surplus. But that's basically how the budgets are done at the county level period. You it, use the fund balance to balance the budget. Number. Yes. Because right. by law, we have to have a balanced budget. Correct. Right. So right. when we use the fund balance to balance the budget, that's really a buffer that we hope we don't go into. Right. But, and we didn't go into it last year. Or the year before. But, or the year before. But in previous budgets, have you always, I mean, I think you've been here about 10 years, have you always on our budgets gone into the fund balance? Yeah. Yes, I've always balanced that up. I balanced into, I had a fund balance so number you used in, the, in you, Middlesex, so yes. Yes, so you've always said, all right, we're going to go into the fund, right. you've always budgeted so that we're going to go into the fund balance. Yeah, you, you conservatively budget your revenue. So I could yeah, do the same thing by guessing the revenues higher than they may come right, in. Right, right, right. And then they come in short and you go in the fund balance, you just don't put it in a number. So I try to give you realistic, as best right. we can, revenue numbers. So we have the expenditures. We can control those the best we can as the year is going along. Some of those become fixed cost. So even let me ask you a question because we haven't um, in the years that we have raised taxes, we've had a couple of years where we raised them significantly. So even in those years when we said, hey, we're I think we've had a four cent one, we've had a 11 cent one or um, we had you've 11, gone, we, we yeah, had well, 11, that was because yes. of the referendum. Yeah, the referendum, and so right. it was but, the same thing. So that even was in those years, because, yeah, yeah, yeah all, um, that whole thing was earmarked away, right. so yes, so we had a balance. Even in those number. years that you, you went into the fund balance? I remember we went up eight, 8 cents before, but I showed you in that budget that we needed 11. Mm. Yeah. Right, 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 yeah. And so that was balanced off the fund fund balance, too, to get get us to, you know, pass that 3 cents we didn't have. But in 2021, we went into the fund balance 800,000, but because of the COVID funds that we used to offset the fire and rescue and sheriff's office, we, we actually came out ahead. Correct. And so I that's the we, $5 million you're talking about, right? That was that one. We we came ahead last year, okay. five, two, yeah. but that was personal property. Right. It was okay. just growth but, and but, revenue. But Everything the point, was booming. Yeah, the point that, that we can't lose sight of is because of the way the county has to budget, we always designate money from the unencumbered balance to balance the budget. Yes, I like for it to be a whole lot smaller number than and, 1. And, 1. 9 million. I'll and tell the, you that. The, you know, the million point, is a lot easier. Yeah, to the deal. point is, and, and I'm I'm going to give you a compliment, Mr. Cully, because I think since you've been here, you've done an excellent job with budgeting and, and finance. You budget revenue very conservatively, and then you budget expenditures just as conservatively too, but it gives us a little more buffer because... I don't think there's ever been a year where we didn't hit our revenue targets. Correct. You know, so I think that's been a great thing and that's helped us all along and it, it made the county financial picture a lot better. And with Ms. Smith, we're in great shape now. So I appreciate the work that you both have done. Mr. Underwood had a question. Yeah, I, Mr. Chairman, I think what happened is we had the eight cent tax increase. Um, that I didn't bring for. Didn't bring right. for but, we, but we had the eight cent tax increase. And I was adamantly against it. And it just so happened that we did get the additional funds, which we didn't anticipate. I didn't anticipate. But I was still against the tax increase. But we we gained revenue but that's, and had a surplus. That's part of, part of that is and what so, Mr. Cully and I were going back and forth right. about is in June, we get an initial bump oh, correct. because that's right. we set the tax rate, which wasn't accounted for. Right. So that's part of that money. Right. And then COVID came. Mm -hmm. We got some more. And we got 5.2 million. For the next year, we got 5.2 million. So we still had that tax increase in there because we were still right. collecting the funds, but it just gave us additional cushion. But as it turns out, because of the need for firefighters and actually work to our favor, be conservative. So, well, I didn't agree with you, Mr. Gully. I, that, you know, I must tell you, I, I don't agree with the tax increase. I say if we have a tax increase, then it should neutralize itself in the budget, is, is what I believe. And it didn't do that over the last couple of years, but I understand the factors which caused us to have such a, uh, a positive uh, number in terms of 
additional revenue. So, um, like I said, I appreciate what you do as well. And, you know, I push you pretty hard, I'm sure, about the number, but I think you do an outstanding job as well. So I appreciate it. The only thing I would add to that COVID year is, when, if you can remember, we were budgeted in the spring of 20 <clears throat> and the world was shutting down. We were all concerned about where revenues would be. Yeah. And one of the big surprises was that everybody stayed at home and ordered on Amazon and the state had adopted the sales tax, sales tax law. Enough. And we, yeah. our sales tax numbers shot up way more than we had ever anticipated, you know, in the budget. And our meals tax didn't take the hit we thought. And I mean, there were jurisdictions that were really hurt, the, you know, Fredericksburg and the, and the yeah, jurisdiction. Yeah, we had a lot of carry-out things. They had, yeah, mm -hmm. they were hurt a lot, but because we were small, we weren't hurt as bad as some of those other, but we didn't know going in, so we were real conservative with those numbers, and then they went past what we anything we'd ever seen, so. And then the feds gave us money as well. Okay, so so the point Mr. Black made was the last two years, we, we used the fund balance to balance the budget, but instead of using that money, we were able to add money to the fund balance. That is correct. What is the fund balance right now? Ms. Smith's right She's behind you. She's got that on a piece of paper. That was the next question. At June 30th of fiscal year 22, the unassigned, undesignated fund balance number was 28,158,303. 28 million. And? However, um, during this fiscal year, we have restricted some funds, um, 2.5 million for the Sparta Fire Station, or fire and EMS capital projects is what we called it, as well as we restricted $3 million for um, water and sewer projects. So about 5.5 .5 of that has been restricted. So 22.5. So that so gives us 22.5. 22.6, mm -hmm. okay. All right. I said 23 to make the math easy. And what is the what is the amount? So that's 22.6, that's, that's unencumbered. That's that's the unencumbered, unassigned, and and we don't we don't know whether we get to count the restricted money as part of the encumbered or not. But no, you do not. Okay. And so what, what is once it's it's, a res it's restricted, it falls in a different category. Wait one second. So what's the total county budget for for fiscal year twenty two? So our financial policies require us to go by operating revenues. Okay. Um, so the operating revenues as of June 30th of 2022 were about 91 million. 91 million is operating revenue. Yes, sir. So. We are required to have 12%. Nine and four, I thought Jeff just said 15 or, or we said Our 15. target is 15. 13 to 17 is what the policy is. Our target is 15. Our target is 15%. Our so, required is 12%. Okay, so 10% of 91 is 9.1. So we're 25. And half of that is four and a half. So 13, six yes, sir. is what yes, we sir. should have as the minimum. Yes, sir. You agree with that? Yes, sir. Is that math right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we, got, we got roughly 20, 24.8%. Yes, sir. When Courtney goes through those bond documents and shows you those comparisons to other counties, right. there are a lot of them that are that way. And I want to point out the fund balance is our only, only. strong point. Right. We are off on every other one of the things that the bond agencies use to rate a county. Sorry if I'm not coming through. So please keep that in mind. Yes, we're, we're really strong on that, but that's why we have our bond rating. So if you get down anywhere near the bottom or 15 or 12, and our other numbers are all not even at where they should be, we're going to lose our bond rate. Just, I know Courtney will tell you that. And, and that's, I'm going to give Mr. Mr. Black the thing in a second, but that's part of what I wanted to accomplish today in our, in our first session is kind of make sure we all understand where we are, what we are expecting, and what we have to do. So, Mr. Black, go right I, ahead. I just had, just for public record, so people know what is... Um, so yes, the, the, the fund balance is in excellent shape as far as, but we have other things dinging us. What is dinging us? Uh, debt per capita and assessed value. It, 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 I don't remember the exact term. Assessed value real estate? Yeah, assessed value real estate per, 
I'd have to get the report from Courtney, but there's two, there's three things they look at strongly. They look at other things, employment, growth, businesses, all those things, but there are three real strong points. And the one that carries us over is the really strong cash position we have. So when they're giving you this bond rating, so you go and borrow money that you have a strong savings account gives them comfort that you're not going to default on something. So the closer we get down to minimums, then all the other things are not strong. They're not going to rate us where we are. And then that just costs us in when we have to borrow money because we'll have a lower bond rate. But I can get that for you. It's in Courtney's bond book. Well, it's, it's three things. Mr. Chair. Moves, Mr. Blackburn. No, what did you say? It says that per capita. And what was the other one? It's assessed the assessed value of the property, okay. not per capita, but per the budget or okay, something. You can get it for Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Forehand. Um, Mr. Kelly, as far as collateral, uh, a couple different things. A lot of the bonds that we have like when we did the road project, if we had to borrow money for the road project, they, we can't use the road for collateral. It's not Correct. like, it's not like personal lending, Correct. but we still have schools that are collateral on loans. Is that an accurate statement? We, it seemed like to me, we did a financing when I first got here. Long time ago. That used uh, Bowling Green. Yeah. Bowling Green Elementary is a is some, and we got the school board because I remember going to a school board meeting to get their their blessing on that. Um, I don't know so the why. In there. We couldn't the, use the why as collateral for its own loan, and we're still paying on that. That's as well. Right. So that's on. I think on, that's, I think that's, that's unsecured. The one that, school. that might be the one. School, that yeah. might that's be the, the one. That, that's the one we yeah. need for the school. That's the one that had the school in it. Okay, so we so we have Bowling Green Elementary as collateral for the YMCA. <laughs> okay. Just um, yes, but we don't have a lot of collateral. We don't have really anything that doesn't have. <laughs> Excuse me. And that's I think, no, um, Mr. Forehand, that was the the only way that we could get the loan. I think part of that was the reconstruction at Bowling Green and the the why they were all together. Right. And the only way at that time we could get the loan was to use that school as a right, you know, collateral. I know it just sounds terrible when you say it. That's all. <laughs> it's it's not like they were going to repossess it because we were we weren't going to pay. Ag agreed, that. agreed. But when you hear it, it just it just stings. The other thing is we could put the county administrative uh, building up as collateral. <laughs> I think that's got a note on it. Yeah, because yeah, we did a lot of renovations borrowed, there. Well, you borrowed money originally on that, so I think that's. I don't think we're sitting on anything we don't have some yeah. sort of note on. Yeah, for the most part. But some of those will start coming down. They start to come down. We're sitting on cash that enabled us to use all of our structures as collateral, basically. Right. Now we're sitting on the cash for it, and we kind of have to for the bond rating. Otherwise, because we don't own anything that doesn't have an encumbrance. When you when you borrowed money before I got here for the sewer plant, you had to put up a cash reserve. Yes. So it was the, the borrowing was difficult in those days compared to the cash position we're yes. in today, if we really wanted to do something. We're just running up against policies, as Courtney's pointed out last year, until 27. So that was why I made the recommendation to, to buy the ambulance and the uh, sheriff's vehicles and the brush truck. You remember, I had a pretty skinny CIP as it was because I knew we couldn't really finance too much. Right. But those are things that are ongoing. I mean, you uh, somebody wears ambulances out pretty regularly. So... Uh, Wow. You know, you know, we knew we needed that. So, um, and, and 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 they've gone up from like one fifty nine to three hundred. Even, even my time on the board, they yeah, used to be you know, two ten, yeah, and yeah. now we're paying over three hundred. Three hundred. For, for yeah. And it's not that we're getting more frills; it's basically just gone up. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kelly, um, I haven't looked at every revenue stream, but have are we still pursuing the cigarette tax and is that in oh yeah that's in there that's in there, that's in there. That's in there. That's in there. okay yes yeah, so even I though we haven't passed it yet it's just it's anticipated for no it's passed y'all adopted it we're collecting money i've gotten uh somebody give me a number is it i was thinking that was the first reading it's supposed to be three hundred thousand. okay we, we just my apologies I, I was i was uh it started in march future i was um, mm -hmm. <laughs> No, we just sold our first case, 36 yeah. in a case at $6,000 a piece. 
$216,000 in the first two months. And that doesn't include um, the self-adhesive stamps. So we're about 900, maybe $1,000 in self-adhesive. And that was just the first order from all of the 12 um, wholesalers. Yeah, because you started in March. Yes, sir. So we will only have quarter and a half Okay, of revenue, but that's... I don't know where... I, it's in there. Yeah, pretty good. It's 450 budgeted, and, we, and it's all right. guesstimate on... So as we start, and, and just because they sold that in the first two months, we don't know how long that'll take them to sell those cigarettes Correct. and boxes. They're, they're getting their stock up. Correct. So, so it, we do have 450000 in revenue. Okay. We, we search the revenue hard to try to find every nickel. Yeah. All right, Ms. Right. Ms. Smith. What's what's twenty three is what percentage of ninety three of ninety one? Twenty three. Did we just say that? Was it was it twenty four? Twenty four point eight. Twenty four point eight. Yes, sir. Okay. So we're at 24.8. Our policy is 15. Mr. Cully believes that our financial advisor wants it to stay where it is. Okay. Or close. And, and our budget, without this money we, we just located, was 2.5 million removed from the fund balance. That is correct. Which would get us down to twenty-one. Really, worst case scenario. So that yeah, would be. Uh, I wouldn't. I would be shocked if we hit that. I mean, it'd be very. Revenues would have to really go underwater, and I think we would know that before that, and try to cut spending every way we could. But yes, yeah. I mean, we could go in the fund balance. That is possible, but I wouldn't expect to go in at more than a million dollars. I think if I told Courtney I was going in two and a half million, he'd be upset. <laughs> if it went to in this two and a half million, it would drop us down to twenty three percent. It would drop us down to twenty three percent if we took this. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, and it's not percentage you're going to look at. It's that we went in, okay, according to Courtney. They don't like us going in the fund balance, budgeting. Like I said, the paper number and not going in is one thing, but going in they don't like. And I'm not saying they're going to drop you if you do it one year, but if you would have to correct that and not go in two years in a row. And again. The same financial advisor said we had pretty much come up against our borrowing limit. Correct. Based on everything else. Correct. What What are the reasons he gave us for that again? Policy, all of our policy reasons where your payoff, you know, you have to have 53%. They like to be paid off in a number of years out and all those things. So that until some things pay down in 27, that's when it would give us the headroom to borrow. Okay. I don't want to speak for Courtney, but he made a, a presentation on all that. And th sure that's the takeaway. Ms. Smith, do you have the county debt number? I, I think you gave us that before. I don't know if you were prepared to do it now. I, she doesn't have that one. Okay, that's fine. That's... Yeah, it was 200 some. She she sent it to us via email. Yeah. Anybody got a computer? I do. Uh, you might be able to find it. That's principal. That's principal. Okay. I have another question because that, that affects our budget, which is totally different. Mr. Fincham, can you help me for a second, please? I think since we've got all these folks here, we might as well ask them all questions. So Mr. Wilson will be next. I was at the Belmont HOA meeting last week. Yes, sir. And somebody made a presentation called Belmont West. Okay. You look as surprised as I was. <laughs> um, do you remember that? It was like 63 houses or something like that? Yes. Uh, Atlantic Homes built, I believe it was 63, 65 townhouses. Um, no, this is this is brand new houses that they expect to come now or next year. 
We have, you have Belmont North one, which is 526 units. That's the one that they're talking about coming back to the board for. Yes, you have Belmont North two, which was a 75 unit townhouse project uh, off of Coolwater Drive. Um, and then you have Belmont West, which is part townhouses, part multifamily, which has not been built yet. That's the one then. And because he talked about 63 houses, there was a question about getting the utility lines out to his property. Mm -hmm. But, but my question is, is that project in our utility plan? I guess that's kind of between you and Mr. It's Schieber, in the growth but. area. Um, any utility extensions would be the responsibility of the developer. Right. Well, what I'm looking for is water and sewer connections are considered county revenue. Yes, sir. So are those water and sewer connections in our budget that you know of? No, because we have not seen uh, a, a preliminary site plan um, okay. on those 63 units, to my knowledge. No, it'll happen next fiscal year, Maybe. which will be part of it. They're not in the budget now. That would be additional revenue in the 24 actual numbers. Assuming the construction market remains right. decent, a lot of Although assumptions. we are seeing downward pressure. Yeah, a lot of assumptions involved, but I just thought there was another possibility of more connection. So I just wanted to confirm with you. And, you know, the developer said we don't have to do anything with the county because it's already been approved. And zoning wise, that would be yes. They yeah. would still need site plan approval. Yeah, there was <laughs> close to 2,000 houses. Mm -hmm. I thought I knew each one, but yeah. I guess I don't. So this new section that doesn't have to come to the county will just go to planning for site plan, and then they, they can start building if they find people to, yeah. to buy the houses they're building. Yeah, and site plan includes utilities, right. roads, uh, stormwater through DEQ, et cetera. Okay. Well, they've got to they've got to get an easement from the HOA, so I'm not sure it'll be next year, but I would hope it helps our connections okay yeah if it were me i would not be counting on that 63 connections do you have okay do you have the the bridlewood connections bridlewood is uh the the new section of bridlewood they've right. already timbered on lady smith road so they've already cut down those trees are those are those homes that are bridlewood's building in that um i think we have to ask joey whether he included that in his connection figures Mr. Schiebel is shaking his head and yelling, I did not. We, are they, I mean, I'm just curious, are they planning on, I mean, because they've timbered it. Yes. So they're planning on starting to build this year? Probably early in the next fiscal year. I know uh, Mr. Schiebel has some utility comments. I believe they've had to go back and correct, and we are still working on acquiring the so summer of 20 easement. summer of 23 or summer of 24 they could conceivably be under construction later in or, or in the next fiscal year so that would be summer summer to fall of 2023 okay thank you Okay, the debt service number she sent last was was just um, gone. So we don't have total. Yeah, she said that. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Cowley? Email before that. Oh. Okay. Anything you would like to give us... Um, about projections for the budget, revenue projections, any impact things you can think of right now? No, the only thing I would add to your discussion about um, utility connections, we looked at that, uh, uh, Mr. Sheep and I talked about that, with the downturn in the economy and mainly only Pendleton building, we, we lowered that down and we're 
hopeful that we will reach the, the connection. So I wouldn't go too far up with those or that right. one, because that becomes, what that is is general fund trans, that just changes the, you know, if you don't get those connections, it's more money from the general fund to pay debt service, because uh, operations of utilities is paid for, but it's the debt that's not. Yeah, before you got here, that was done, so. Yeah. And it, it, it didn't pan out, so it wasn't a good thing. Mr. Forehan, you have another question? Mr. Kelly, looking at uh, our jail and juvenile attention, juvenile, it's increased $850,000 in three years. Is that inflation? Are we incarcerating it, more people? I, uh, Alan will have to answer in detail, but I think okay. part of that is inflation uh, and the cost to run the jail have gone up. Okay. For juvenile. For juvenile detention, it's based on a five-year average, and then they factor in what it takes to, to run the facility. And um, population's actually been down, but it doesn't it doesn't change the your expenses to to run it because it's not down enough to hire less people. So. Okay, because that was, that was my follow-up question. Like, if we had some crime spree and we incarcerated ten more people, you know, are we going to get an additional bill? You know, our ADM is up. You know. <laughs> Right. Um, That's the beauty of the five-year average. Okay. It, it smooths that out. All right. A crime spree and we arrest 10 people? Just saying. <laughs> I'm just throwing an example. We, we bust a major trafficking ring and we've got 15 more people in Pamunkey Regional Jail. You know. That's a per diem. So that one is... A monkey is a per diem. So we put more people in there, we pay more per day right. per diem. So that, okay. so that does that go up. Still, that does go up if we arrest, if, uh, incarcerate more people. Um, but I've never seen a balanced number come back around. You know, yeah. Are we always the, their expenses there or right up. under? Their expenses at, at the jail have gone up. So they adopt a budget of which we're with Ashland and Hanover. So we're, you know, a member. But, it, you know, Ashland and Hanover can team up against this if they want to. But anyway, and it's located in Hanover, so they sort of the, the big boys in the room. So they adopt their jail budget, and then we pay on a average per diem, projected per diem of what we've been running. Um, and their costs are up. I mean, the jail officers, food, medical, ev everything is skyrocketed in jail jail costs, okay. like, every, like everything else. I was just shocked that it was $850,000. I wasn't real thrilled, but that, yeah. that's the adopted budget, and that's our share. Yeah, okay. Thank and you. We pay that quarterly. Okay. And they true it up at the end of the end of the year. So, it, so there is a balancing number that comes yeah, back out. Yeah, so if, yes. Okay. Yeah, sometimes we get some money back. So what, you know, there's been times we've gotten sixty to 90000 back. There's, okay. you know, that type of thing. What's the other one that we use? We use Pamunkey and what else? Uh, Merrimack Juvenile Center, which Merrimack is 18, 18 jurisdictions in that. Okay. And that's the one has a, they went to about three or four years ago before COVID, maybe a five-year roll on average, okay. which does kind of level us. We don't see the spikes because in juvenile you did, it didn't take much. Right. You lock up three juveniles that you more than you normally had, and you had this huge increase, and then it would drop off when they would get through the uh, judicial process. Yeah, that that's where there was a fight at the school, and you could find 10 kids that got arrested. And then we pay per, per day. Diem. Yeah, per day, yes. Okay. Um, I think that was it for Mr. 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 Wilson, since you're here. You have to be the bearer of good news because your economic development. You, you have to be the bearer of good news. So we're setting the stage for you. Um, what I would like to give you an opportunity to mention the, the many projects that are about to happen, um, that the county will see some impact in our fiscal year upcoming, that you can tell us about, like um, the ones in the Carmel Church area. Uh, <clears throat> yes, sir. Um, I, I hear Mr. Kelly back here is saying this is built into the uh, budget as, as you're presented. Uh, World-class distribution uh, is a $274 million investment for the county. Uh, it will create 1,000 jobs with a payroll of approximately $38 million. Um, this is particularly advantageous to us, uh, not only because of the property tax that's involved with that, but uh, that payroll actually will be spent somewhat in the county 
gas, meals taxes, sales taxes, uh, people have to go to lunch, um, buy groceries and so forth. So that, that will be a, an impact for us. That's a very positive one. Um, Lingerfelt development, uh, it's on our books in planning and in just about uh, to make an official announcement of a larger building in that area as well. And there should be more revenue from that building. Uh, it's possible that they can get it built within uh, this next fiscal year. Uh, so it'd be possible to tax that. Um, there's some retailing that we anticipate in Route 639, for example. Um, once, since the board uh, wisely invested in Route 639, what it did is it allowed the opportunity for businesses to set up on that road. Otherwise, the cost of doing business to, to the off-site improvements that were required were too expensive for any one business to take on. So mm -hmm. since this has been done, we've seen the sheets. There's going to be a Wendy's built next to that. There is another retail anticipated next to that. Um, and across the street, the southern side of 639, um, it's well known that Wawa intends to be there. There are also a couple other retail businesses we believe will be there. Um, this is not just dividing up the pie. This is bringing more money off the interstate because it gives drivers, travelers more opportunity to make choices that they like. While they're here, they'll be able to spend money in different places, which will enrich the county further. Uh, we always envision uh, rather 95 being like a river of money running by us that we need to be somehow dip into to take into the county. And these retail opportunities allow us to do that. Uh, we see the potential for other retail. Uh, we're having conversations this very week in, in that regard. Uh, it's a little early to talk about it. We see significant other um, industrial investments uh, coming down the, the pipeline. So that will be very lucrative for us, but I can't tell you about the timing exactly. And then we have a number of high value projects that we're working on. Um, again, timing a little difficult to say about that, but uh, I, I can tell you that our big problem right now is we are running out of land um, in, in growth areas. And we need to start thinking seriously about extending past the current growth areas because we simply don't have a lot of marketable pieces left. Um, and I'll be giving the board some mapping information on that soon. But uh, okay. that's, oh, I beg your pardon. Yes, MC Dean, uh, has, is their expansion this year, I should have mentioned that. Uh, they've been on my, my uh, front uh, burner for quite some time. Uh, they're 168,000 square foot building. Uh, they're talking about doing another building next year. So this is almost like three years in a row that they're just opening new buildings. They're doing such a great job. 400 technology jobs at MC Dean in the county. The people don't know of it because it's tucked away, but it's a gem for our community. Uh, and they have another 300 acres that's virtually under contract now. So um, again, like I said, we're running out of land. Well, thank you. Anybody have a question for Mr. Wilson? Is there any talk of a grocery store coming to us? Like another one besides Food Line? That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> so no. That, that, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Our options are Food Line and Food Line and then Food Line. The, the, I can go to Bowling Green and go to Food Line, or I can go to Laysmith and go to Food Line. So it, was, we're covered. We, we monopolize the Food yes. Line opportunities. It would that, really, actually, that, that's a great question because I, I get that all the time, and I love it when the citizens call and ask about that. Why can't we have a Wegmans uh, or, or something akin to that? Uh, or a Publix uh, or something along that line. It, the answer is simple. It's market-based. The decisions these companies make are market-based. They have their own criteria for making these decisions. Um, we call them. They know exactly what's going on in Caroline County. They know what's going on everywhere. That's their job to find the next great market for their business. And if they are not building, it's because they've already made a decision. Um, we can't talk them into it uh, because it's it's cut and dry for them what they oh, require. Oh, trust me, we have tried to talk them into it. Indeed. Um, the response that we've gotten over and over again is you don't have enough rooftops. And 
if we add more rooftops, we've got more issues. So we're going to keep trying. We've got yes, a sir. couple uh, opportunities maybe, so we'll keep trying. All right, no other questions from Mr. Wilson. Thank you. So Mr. Cully, he told us about all sorts of great things, and you're going to tell us they're all in the budget. <clears throat> Langenfelder's not. I don't think we, we discussed that because we don't, uh, I don't think I have enough information. But uh, world-class distribution, which is a you know, million two square foot, we worked with the commissioner, and when the temporary CO was issued on that, then it, you know, that's, we've got revenue in. It's not the full amount, but pretty close uh, that we figured we'd pick that up. So once their certificate of occupancy is granted, they're officially on the books? And we... We don't send them a tax bill that day, do we? Oh, no, no, no. no. It'll, um, once we get the permit, uh, temporary approval, final approval, whatever it may be, um, I send that out to the commercial assess assessor. Once it comes back to us, we bill it back from the time the permit was approved. So it may take a month to get it assessed correctly or whatever, but the billing starts from the day of the occupancy. So that's another proration? Sort of. Kind of, yeah. Sort of. We didn't leave it out because we knew it was a, that's, you know. Okay. <clears throat> a huge building, so, yeah. Mr. Bassoon, when they start having their trucks, equipment, personal property, that'll just be at a later time and... Yes, once they change their garage jurisdictions to Caroline County and DMV, we can pick that up in a DMV download, and then when we send out our business personal property filing forms, um, they will declare their business personal property at that time so we can pick it up. Um, if it's not here on January 1, we don't get it. But if it comes in September and they start filling it up, January 1, we'll pick it up. And outside of that, all this construction, Mr. Wilson's talking about too, please, when, um, when I say business personal property, when these contractors come in, we work close with planning and zoning as well to pick up the equipment that these folks are bringing in because those contractors will be paying on B-Pole if they go over a certain amount and we pick up their business personal property while it's here in Caroline County as of January 1. So if they come here in September, we won't get them, but if they if that equipment's still here on January 1, they now have to declare it in Caroline County. So we work close with uh, EDA and planning on that. Okay, before you go, Mr. Bassoon, the Coleman Church Fire Station started in November, I think we had the groundbreaking. They've been over there since December, with heavy equipment on site, the contractors. If the if we have the permit, which I'm sure we do, we've already communicated with them, and they have all their stuff declared with us. And also, we work close with Mr. Whiteman as well, so to make sure that the contractors there, that he's going back and checking, are right with my office. So, so, so contractors from out of the county who bring their heavy equipment in and leave it in the county have to pay B poll on all that equipment that stays in the county. They, is what they you're pay saying. business personal property. Business personal property tax. And then they'll pay B poll if they cross thresholds. Three hundred three hundred thousand for in area, twenty five for out of area contractors. So if let's just use Dr. Horton for example, if they come in as a general and then they have all these, well, let's use the Carmel Church the the world what is it in oh, world, class world class distribution when they came general pulled the contract they had like 18 subs underneath of them mm -hmm. we were we worked close with mr whiteman to make sure all those subs from michigan or wherever they came from because these people have their own people that they network with we make sure and get with them presidents of the companies ceos of the company because they're out of state because they're out of state but if in sure. state you can't charge them b-pole again can you but we charge them b-pole if they go over three hundred thousand. In the, in the so, county. So they're paying B poll in two places? No. The contractor? Well, whatever they do in Caroline County, they'll remit for Caroline County. Whatever they do in their home localities, they or whatever other locality, okay. they pay each locality what they do. So it's like athletes who pay state tax in whatever place they play in. We have a running spreadsheet of these folks that um Okay. You know, if they build up, some of them won't cross the threshold, but if they if they're working on 15 houses in Lady Smith Village, the same the same carpenter, and mm -hmm. once they cross that 25,000 threshold, that's us. Now, if they go back to Henrico County and start building within the same year or wherever else, that doesn't affect us. That locality gets it. 
Okay. Did you have something you want to add, Mr. Stevens? Oh, okay. <clears throat> Ms. Scully, you were back for... Questions. Oh, yeah. oh, I just thought you had something to say. Okay. Oh, no, I just shoved him aside. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, he is the one who sets the values. Oh, yes. I mean, right. they, 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 they go in after everybody they can find on those type things because okay. we've worked at many of many a meeting on that to make sure we're coordinating building permits and what's going on so that they can capture that. I, I had no idea that's how it works, so it's kind of good to know. All right, how does uh, Mr. Black? I just had uh, a couple of questions and maybe Ms. Stevens from the schools, if you don't mind, we bring that up or um, I just had a couple of questions in regards to, I think in the budget for the schools, you had roughly 800,000 in unencumbered money or they're getting basically, it's not, that's not a- uh, It was 762, it was 5%, 5% more in their transfer to operations. And I know that they and gave it to- And there's other a, things for buses and things like that. Third, yeah. That, yeah. That's what gets up to the eight. And I know the schools gave um, us some information. I don't have it with me, it's at the house, but what does that, what did they need? What did the schools need? Maybe Ms. Stevens, you can answer this. What does the 752 get them? I guess I'm trying to look at with the 752, what are they getting for the teachers? Cause um, just kind of curious what that would, what, what that would do for them. And I know there was some stuff that they had in their budget that they were gonna do without, without. It would be on their plan. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Ms. Stevens, I thank, thank you for Good coming. Evening. I hadn't planned on calling you, but okay. glad you're here. Good evening. Based on the budget, Mr. Black, we will have to rework our entire budget. At the time, we were at a $4.47 million gap. Therefore, we'll reduce the seven, so we'll be down to $3.6 million gap. With the skinny budget, we... Um, we're anticipating a net increase of revenue of state funding of 353,000. With the skinny budget passing, we went down to a net increase of 66,000 from the state. So we lost almost 300 grand. I, I guess, and we can discuss this, I guess my concern is from, and I understand there's no, there's no way, I mean, and, and I'm one voter for that, the, the 4 million that I asked for, that's, that's um, to me, that's an untamable number. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I just can't go to the citizens and say, hey, we need $4 million. Um, but I would maybe, and if, I don't know if we have planned to meet again or something, but I would just like to know, for example, there was a lot of teachers that came here in front of us the other night um, at, our, at our public hearing. And, you know, I'm a teacher myself, so I, I can completely sympathize with, um, you know, teacher, teacher salary. And um, when you hear teachers that have been here for 20 years and they're saying they're going to food banks, um, I, I, you know, I think that's something that we really need to look at as far as uh, what the salary is. And uh, I'd like to, I don't know if there's a way of numbers, like for example, what gives them, I know that the state, the state still has that plan for the 5%, um, right? In other words, we have to match it. The state gives the SOQ teachers the 5%. Just out of curiosity, what is the, to do the 5%, what is the cost? If you're gonna do the teachers the 5%, what, is, what would be the, what would be the, what would you need for the income to do that? Certainly, so looking at, and I only have projections at this time because we're having, um, the software vendor did some updates, so we're having to rework the budget, and I've been working with them the past two days, but we're at 1.8 million estimate for a 5% increase for all staff. I'm looking at the house bill for SOQ, it's 1.22 million. Um, the local match required is 634,000. Based on the prevailing rates that the state is at compared to the Caroline salaries, the state and the local match for SOQ is basically paying an entire 5% for all of our staff, other than we're short 50,000. So that's showing how low our rates are compared to the prevailing rate that the state SOQ funded positions, which is about half of our positions, we're able to give a 5% raise to all of our staff with just an additional 50,000 required. So what's the 1.8 do then? You said at 1.8, what would that do? 
I guess I'm confused. I mean, I guess I'm lost. So you're saying to me that 50,000 will get you the 5% and then I heard 1.8 million. So yes. there's, the so I'm, what's the 1.8 versus the 50,000? An I additional 50,000 for, to cover the non, the non SOQ positions is what? So the state funding, the required local match of 634,000, we just need the 50,000 more to make it 1.8 to get a 5% increase in there for all staff. 50 more from what we, uh, 50 more from what we've budgeted for you or? No, sir, 50 more than the 634. So based on what you budgeted, we are at that 767. So we have been asking for people over things. Um, so any funding that we would receive from you would be going towards people, would be going towards compensation for increases. So and we can do a 5% based on the state revenues with the funding that has been provided to us. All right, so let me just make sure because I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm tired. And, and so right now you plan if you get 50,000 more, you can do the teachers in the county staff 5%, is that what you're saying right now? Yes. So then any Wait, 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 wait. 50,000 more. Than of, the required of local what? match. Of the 634? Mm -hmm. So you need 684? Correct. Is and what then we would need if we're talking the 1.8 million. Average. Based on the state giving you 1.8 this year. Correct. In the budget that they haven't approved yet. Correct. Which won't be approved well, it's until. The, it's the skinny budget. So it is approved. Oh. But okay. Yeah, they're going so back. The, so the 768 already covers the 650 plus the 50,000. So we're, we're already above the, the 700,000 that you need by 68,000, correct? Correct, for 5%. For 5%, increase. so we're 68,000 above. I'm just making sure, because I'm looking, Mr. Culley's number for schools, just for, just for operations was 768. Seven. And you're saying you need 700, because you're saying 650 plus 50. So we're there, plus 68,000 additional dollars. You are there. Okay. If you are only looking at a 5%, we know 5% is not right. going to move Caroline. Right, okay. So and it's not going to cover fuel increases, okay. et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I, I'm with you. I just, yeah. I, I got you. So now any additional money, I guess, so beyond the 700, any additional money would be used for? We have been saying compensation. Compensation. But there are some things that I will need to increase. Fuel is one. Okay. And we have no increases other than in our budget. This time we had um, Chromebooks that they're going to have to come off the table. Other than that, there was absolutely no increases in the budget other than compensation and the positions that we provided you. Is there a way that, um, just a, we're not, we, we're not voting on anything tonight, are we? We're, we don't plan on voting on it. Okay. All right. I, I guess, is there a way that you could um, get for me, for example, and I know you've, I, we were inundated with a lot of, and I appreciate what Dr. Kelberic does. She does an excellent job. But uh, we were inundated with a lot of data and information from you guys earlier. Is there a way we could very simply say this is, you know, uh, you know I like my graphic organizers and 5% were there. 6%, this is what it costs, 7%, and then with the capital cost too, like for example, the Chromebooks, is there a way that you could just give me a very simple chart? This is what gets us where with this kind of county money? Absolutely. But that would require I just prioritize now. Well, I'm sure the school board has a priority. No, no, I'm not asking to do it tonight. I'm asking to just say like, right. right well, just we, are, we, we are, just so you'll know, um, Chairman Kelly from the school board and I have been in communication trying to set up another joint meeting. Okay. Um, in May, hopefully we'll have yeah, yeah, as I much just, as we can. But, I, so. but it's just something very simple. It's, I know that she's got a lot of goals and the whatever the, the new goal thing for the schools is, but it's just something very simple. One sheet, one small chart. This is what the numbers get you, and this is what we would spend if we got this. This is where we'd spend it here if we got that. This is where we... Something very, very simple and very, very clear. Absolutely. We okay. can do it. Um, it's just taking time at this time to rework the entire budget, which mm -hmm. I'm in the process of doing because with the compensation study, you place people on new pay scales, you know, each individual. So, but we will, we have been the past two days working towards that and we will continue to work to, to get just, very quickly. To and that know. brings up one more question I have for you because I know as teachers, we um, sometimes we get a pay increase and then we get the step increase. 
Does that include the step increase for the teachers? The 5%, we would put it in there as inclusive of the step increase. So they would get a step increase plus and a little bit more to make a total of 5%. Okay. Okay. Because our step increase runs about 1.68 on the teacher scale. Right. So it would be the 3.42. So it would be like a combination of combined. It would. Combined and you would do that, and that would that would cover every. So it wouldn't be like top heavy at the bottom, and then the people at the top are like not getting anything. It would be it would be the person at thirty years is still going to make up pretty well compared to the person at step zero or step one. Mm -hmm. It's it's all employees. The only right, 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 right. Well, I just well sometimes what schools do is you know I mean I, all school systems do it is they up the pay for the teachers coming in to attract teachers coming in, and then. The teachers who have been there for a while don't get nearly, and so you get compression. Right. Mm -hmm. So you've been there for six years, seven years, eight years, it's and all of a sudden you're. It's not just schools. It's in. Yeah, yeah, right. it's everywhere. But right. you know, it's yeah. So our starting pay would not be able to increase five percent. It would increase the difference of the cola, which would be the three point four two percent. Those at the top of the scale would not get the top five percent. They would only get the cola above the step increase. Okay. okay. May I ask a question, Ms. Stevens? Yes, sir. And I just want to make sure I'm, I'm correct because I do intend to repeat what we say here, okay? Certainly. The budget from the state, the skinny budget has been approved, right? Yes, sir. And in that skinny budget, there's 1.8 million directed towards Caroline for uh standard quality teacher raises no sir it's for everybody it's 1.12 million directed for standard of quality from state funding local money is 634. so you you take the 1.2 from the state the 634 from the county and that got you to the 1.8 you were talking about earlier correct 1.12 from the state okay we also need to keep in mind that we are losing money for basic aid. Okay. So our net increase of revenues is only sixty six thousand. I'm I'm just trying to get to the to the a couple of numbers that I can understand. So when I when I say something else, it'll it'll make sense. Ms. Stevens. But but you said one point eight million, but then I got to two point five million covers everybody. That is that right? No, sir. One point eight million is the estimated of a five percent increase for everybody. For everyone, one point one two million okay. is the state funding. So, if one point eight is five percent for everybody, then a little bit more than three hundred thousand is is a one percent raise for everybody. A five percent raise for everyone. No, 1.8 is 5%. Mm -hmm. So I'm dividing 5 into 8, which is 3.6 or something like that. So 300. Oh, you're trying to get 1%? Yeah. 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 If, if 1.8 equals 5%, one fifth of 1.8 should be 1%. Correct. So 5 goes into 18, 3 times, 30 left over, and then 6. So 360,000 is 1 percentage point for everybody sound sound fair based on the 1.8 as an estimate yes sir okay so for every i guess that's what mr black was asking for every 360 more you could give a one percent raise for everybody yes mm -hmm. okay but to, to further his question and not speaking for him but he said the, the teachers came and spoke and the support staff came and spoke is there a way that we could say teachers would get 300,000, they, they would end up with a little bit more than 1% because you're not spreading it out for everybody? Is that a fair statement? That's a fair statement for you to make. The right. school board will, can determine where the raises go to. Right. And based on the compensation <laughs> study increase or compensation study, there's an, a significant amount of employees that are not at market and are below market that right. are not teachers. Okay, okay. 
So that, that's 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 kind of what I wanted to make sure I understood. All right. Can I ask one question? Yes, ma'am. If Ms. Stevens, you say you lose some basic aid money, correct? Yes, sir, we are. Do you know how much and why? And the rationale for that from the state is? What, what does basic aid encompass? Well, the rationale from the state is their $200 million issue that they had on sales, ca sales right. tax calculation error. That's so <laughs> so that, I thought the General Assembly said they were going to make that. Yeah. Yes. They did not away. make it whole for yeah. fiscal year 24. So it didn't, so it didn't make you whole. No, right. they did not make okay. it whole. So you lost <laughs> how much in basic? Now if I can read this, Mr. Underwood. Okay. <laughs> I was was it three font? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there is no light down there. Sorry. I can throw my glasses. 353,000 loss in basic aid. That's mm -hmm. so That's okay. with our ADM going up 110. Right. To 441. 4150. 4150. Now, Ms. Stevens, I have one last question for you, if I could. We, a few years ago, we, we entered into a contract with uh, a firm that promised to do a HVAC energy study, and they promised all these savings and things of that nature. Did that contract not really live up to all its stated goals? At the middle school, it's meeting its goals. Um, there's not any significant operational savings that we're seeing. Um, and of course, you know, they do the data. So they give us the report every year and we're not seeing any large kickbacks or operational savings. <laughs> so the report shows that they're still. I could at least get something from solar. <laughs> um, so in this case, in this case, the contractor came in and said, I'm going to save you all this money with utility costs and the reality is you're saying they didn't really do that no the really what they were able to do was do the upgrades for us that's that's really what you're paying for on numbers they are showing some savings as okay. energy costs continue to increase we're not seeing the dollar savings okay it should save but go ahead you could ask at our meeting we had in March, you there was one of the action items was to get us what the cost for the for the middle school HVAC uh, repair replace. Mm -hmm. Do we did we ever get those numbers? Because I don't think we ever saw them. No, nope, we said it was going out to bid. It's out to bid, and we're expecting we actually push back the award till five two. So we're still waiting for any bids to come in. So the engineer never gave you a rough cost? Well, the rough cost that they gave us, we provided to you that evening in the presentation. Okay. So you don't have a final number yet? We do not. Did you, what about the grant that was applied for? They said we will receive information in June. So we haven't received that either. So we don't know what that cost is gonna be or what the grant portion would be yet? Correct. We applied for the grant. We do not have an award at this time. And we put the IFB on the market and we're waiting for an award to be issued on 5-2 or bids are coming in on 5-2. We will. Next no, week. but it's just an additional expense that we haven't, we haven't conquered yet, I guess, capital projects wise. And that's all I'm looking at it from a budget perspective because because that's when we've got to make happen. Right. And somewhere, if it's more than estimates and what we gave, we'll have to find where that money comes from. Okay. Ms. Stevens, I, I want to say we really appreciate you coming down. You weren't given any advance warning to be here, so thank you very much for all the information you provided. Thank you. And we appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Black, we'll follow up with a one-pager. Thank you. Okay, any any uh, other issues you want to discuss in relations to where we are at this early stage with the budget? I think we got a lot of base information tonight. You good, Mrs. Long? 
Mr. Forehand, I've asked my quota of questions for the evening. <laughs> Fortunately, you, there are no quotas on questions because I'd be in trouble. Um, Mr. Black, are you good? Okay. The ceiling, anything else? All right, do we have anything else that board members would like to uh, discuss? We are, we are not going to vote on uh, Mr. Cully's recommendations to tonight of what to do with the $1.5 million that was discovered. So we will uh, probably take that as an action item when we do the budget because they all affect next year's budget. So we can do that anytime before June 30th. The other thing, Mr. Cully, is you said you got a note today expecting the, and you don't have to elaborate, but expecting the General Assembly to be back in June. Correct, it was from the- um, But you expect nothing to happen in June? Well, it was, it was a, uh, an email from the um, Executive Director of the Virginia Association of Counties, which you know they follow the General Assembly closely with their lobbyists. And so the uh, skinny budget's passed, um, and, and the governor made four more amendments to the ones the General Assembly made, and they, those were all in the skinny budget. Um, they said they will uh, return to Richmond in June, um, and there may be some changes, uh, uh, additional budget changes, that, but in that they're not making a lot of headway. They, they had talked to various members of the conference committee um, that there could be, that there would be no further changes. So. It's, it was just informational. Uh, I, what I wanted you to know that the, the numbers that we're dealing with are adopted if they don't change anything else. So we're not waiting for them to adopt anything. They may give the schools some more money. They may do some other things. But you know, right now they're arguing over whether they're going to return it in tax breaks or spend it. And you've got uh, two different houses and two different controls, and so they haven't made a whole lot of progress. What What do we do? In the case, I mean, the, the schools are our biggest budget item. What do we do if the General Assembly hasn't made a decision by, you know, June 1st? We're adopting our budget probably the end of May, the first part of June. You're technically supposed to adopt your budget and give the schools a number by May so right. they can send contracts out. Right. I would... Uh, if the General Assembly comes back in a June timeframe, late June, everybody's gonna to have to amend their budget because most everybody will have adopted a budget way prior to that. Because, you know, the, the schools need the number in, in other counties as well. And then once the tax bill, the tax rate's been set and the tax bills go out, you're pretty much defined within our fund balance, balance the number of what you're able to do with your budget. So once you've decided that, there's no reason not to adopt that and move on so we would probably have a some sort of resolution to add funds to the school budget if the state does that that's what we would come back to you in july if they you know that they said <clears throat> you need to do this here's here, here's money for yeah. I've, i forgot what miss Steven said right, um, but, was the case they lost money but right if they they make some other things whole and put a match back on us then we would come back on we need to just like a grant you know, occasionally the schools yeah. come to us during the year and go, we need matching money with this grant. And we give them it. That's the reason we keep the large fund balance. I mean, it gives you that ability to have some buffer for things that come up during the year. So, I mean, it, once you're ready to adopt a budget, I would encourage you to do it so we can move on. We're moving on into audit season. So we're, uh, I know Tamika will be tired of, you know, we get the budget produced and online and move into audit. Auditors will be here in June. And auditors are going to get their their audit to us before December this go round, aren't they? I can't make that promise, but we're going to do all we can. I mean, that's the deadlines of the deadlines. So they're on a two year contract, right? Oh, yes. But that's, this that's is the second year of their two year contract. Yeah, that's still they're going to get our budget that. before December. That's that's dependent on them getting the information from us. So, all right. They should be able to do that because I think all the other departments know how important it is to the board to be able to see actual numbers. We are working toward that very goal. Because that's, I mean, the reality is we're doing a budget right now and we don't have actual numbers for the year we're in and we barely have actual numbers for the last year. So. Oh, we got, yeah, we have numbers through uh, December that, that are good and we've, we've got 
preliminary numbers through March right now, but we have to put the budget together right that's what in I'm January. Saying. I mean, early February to get that to you in, in March. So, you know, we're making our best guess on what we're going to recommend based on what we're given at that time. But yes, we, yeah, it, we would it, like for, we would like for, uh, to be know where our revenues are within, you know, a month to six weeks from that month. So right. I mean, it's it, a goal and we're working toward that. Yeah. It's, it's not a, you know, criticism at all. It's no. just, if a particular agent, if you were running your business and you said, I spent this much money for whatever item, when the next year comes around, you don't just add money to your budget. You look at what your actual numbers are. Oh, yeah, so do. you can compare what you what you need and priorities may change. So an actual line item on one side may decrease and you add that money somewhere else. That's all I'm saying. Is oh, yeah, we, we, we try to do that. We I normally pull the uh, where we are in actuals, but in that we were on two different, the revenues are over in the 400. They're not in the Keystone. I, I, there was no way to really look at that this year, but we once we're all on Keystone, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able year. to look at those where we are actuals a whole lot closer, even if they're, quote, unaudited, so to speak, and not yeah. closed. We'll, we'll have a good idea where we're spending on those and where revenues and where revenues are. Unfortunately, over the last couple of years, most line items haven't gone down because of inflation. Even if you're buying less of it, it's costing you more. I think that's why certain members of the board pushed to get a real financial system. So if we could just get it all over, that'd be another story. It'll be, we're closing in on a couple, a couple of those things to having those things done. Okay, great. All right, no other questions. Um, I guess we'll... Motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, is there a second? Okay. Motions made by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Forehand that we adjourn. Uh, discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. We stand adjourned. Mr. Cully, just as a closing board comment, um, I spoke to Mr. Kelly during the break, and he knows that you're out the third and fourth. And maybe Mr. Parton and Ms. Smith can substitute for you. That would be fine. To do the dual meeting. Mm -hmm. And then based on the dual meeting, then we can schedule our joint board meeting for May. Yeah, they can keep me informed. Okay. I have all the faith in the world. Thank you.